I got a question for, for all of you. Is it possible, is it possible to be called by Christ, right, to be saved, to be baptized, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, right, to give your life to Christ? Is it possible for you to be called by Christ and not sent by Christ? Is that possible? Is it possible for you to be a believer and not sent out to go reach this world for Jesus? It's kind of a rhetorical question right there, but <laughs> got my squad up here, you know, all the, the, the youth over here. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for the encouragement. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. What does the scripture say about being sent? Well, the first thing I want to do is go into the Old Testament. What does the Old Testament say about God sending his people? So we're, we're going to go, if you could go to the next slide, Isaiah 6, 5. So we're in Isaiah 6, 5. Now, I just want to explain kind of the context of this passage. Isaiah, he is in the throne room of God, the temple of God, and he sees the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted. And in this whole passage, there's, there's angels flying around with, with six wings, with uh, wings over their eyes and over their feet, and they're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. This is a pretty powerful passage of Scripture. In Isaiah, the prophet, he says, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. If you could go to the next slide, please. Then he continues. He says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar, with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This whole scene, that just gives a glimpse about how God uses us, unworthy sinners, for his purposes. How he uses unworthy sinners for his purposes. And let me just tell you something. I, before I came to Christ, man, I was a chief among sinners. I was an alcoholic. I had so many addictions in my life. And when God called me, he changed everything in my life. And then he called me to do his will. He called me. He sent me out to fulfill his plans and purposes. Man, he will use any ordinary individual to do his will. Not just some elite few or elite chosen, not just some highly educated person. He will use ordinary people to spread his gospel. Amen. Amen. In this passage, a lot of people see Isaiah as the center focus. And like this is his commissioning as center stage and the main focus of attention, right? He's the heroic volunteer missionary, right? A lot of people see that. However, in the context of the passage, it's God on his towering throne and his holiness. It's then when Isaiah is confronted with the reality of God's holiness and his unworthiness. Again, he said, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. When Isaiah is in the presence of God, he recognizes his own sinfulness and his unworthiness. But there's one thing that we cannot miss in this passage. He was also concerned about the people amongst him. If you could go back one slide. He said, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people 
of unclean lips. He was also concerned about the people amongst them. Do you have a concern with the people around you in your city? Do you have a concern for them that they do not know Jesus? Students, do you have a concern for the the students that are around you that they don't know Jesus? Does that concern you? A few years ago, I went to a conference called Jesus on Trial, and there, there was a lot of uh, Christian speakers and apologists, and one of them was Lee Strobel. I don't know if you guys know who Lee Strobel is. He's the one who wrote A Case for Christ, and they also made a movie on it. It's a really good movie, and I had the opportunity to uh, meet with him afterwards and, and talk with him, and one thing that stuck with me when he spoke He was uh, talking about praying for those who are lost, who don't know Jesus. And he said, what if one day when you come home, Jesus would just show up in your your living room and say, hey, I'm going to answer every single prayer that you've prayed in the last week. Would anybody be saved? Would anybody be saved? Are you praying for the lost? Is that part of your daily prayer life? Is that part of your weekly prayer life? Does it concern you that much? In that moment, in that moment when Isaiah is in the presence of God, he recognizes his own sinfulness and unworthiness. And in that moment, he overhears from the throne of God. If you could go two slides over. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. He said, go and tell this people. And then God gave him the message to tell the people of Israel. See, Isaiah, he was in the midst of the control center of the universe, the control room of God, and God is at center. God is at center. God on mission and God getting on with God's business. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, when God is at the center of someone's life, then you will be on center with the mission of God. And the mission of God is to reach all people for him. Amen? Because God sins to save. If you don't think that in the midst of all this that's going on right now, that God isn't uh, about his business right now, then I don't know if you understand how God works. Right? Pastor Dean mentioned this before, that in the midst of great chaos, all the craziness that's going on in the world right now, God does the greatest work. Amen? Amen? And not only that, But he's looking for people to do that greatest work for him. Amen? Amen. Isaiah is in the control room. God is the center. And what happens here is a recentering of Isaiah's life. And then he is radically recentered on God's mission. Sometimes God has to remind us, right, of what our mission is for him on this earth. Sometimes we got to be realigned, right? We got to be humbled. We got to be cleansed. And then he's ready. And then we are ready to be sent because he had, because Isaiah had the concern for the people as well, right? He said, for I am amongst a people of unclean lips. And you know what? This is also the heart of God. You see so many instances in the New Testament, Jesus wept, right? That's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept concerning Lazarus' death. He wept because of sin and what it leads to, right? For the wages of sin is death. And he wept over that. He also wept when he went into Jerusalem, right? He wept over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, right? You kill the prophets. 
right? He, Jerusalem rejected him, and he de- just desired to just bring them back into a relationship with him. If that is God's heart, then that should be our heart as well. Amen? If not, then we need to get realigned, right? You need to get realigned with the mission of God. For the church at large, sometimes we can become so church-centered, meaning that we, we place our programs and everything else above everything and we don't actually reach lost souls and i'm not saying that our programs are bad i'm not saying that at all but it should we should use them for a means of reaching those who do not know christ right or else we're just going to have no vision we're going to grow inward right and our only purpose is to exist that's not what we're going to do. That's not, what we, that's not what we do here at LFC. Amen. We need to rediscover the mission of God. And we do that by re- rediscovering the heart of God. God even says himself, for his desires are for none to perish, right? But for all to come to a saving faith in him. Amen. Where else do we see sending in the New Testament? If you could go to the next slide in Romans 10, 13 through 15. This may be a familiar passage for everyone. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Next slide, please. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, right? People need to be saved, right? We need to be saved from our our sin, and that hasn't changed. In fact, if you just look around the world right now, it's just kind of... uh, just volumes and volumes of it are coming out right now in our nation and in our world. And from a biblical perspective, if you just look around what's going on in the world right now, you can see that the world is in need of a savior. The world is in need of a savior. People are all like, look at the racism that's going on, the rioting, the shootings, the violence. None of this stuff is new, right? And... It isn't going to stop until Jesus Christ returns because we live in a fallen fallen world that needs a savior, amen? Amen. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? God sends because God saves. And you know what? He never stops sending until his work is accomplished. John 20, 21 through 22. This is a a good, really, really good verse right here for the sending of God, that God sends people out. It says, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, right? The Father sent Jesus. I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus, he didn't just arrive, he was sent. And just as Jesus was sent, he also sends sends his followers to continue on with his mission and to continue on with his ministry, Amen? amen? So with that question that I asked earlier, is it possible to be called by Christ and not be sent by Christ? I think we all know the answer to that, right? The answer is no, it's not. It's not possible. We are saved. Believers are saved. Then we are sent to tell others how to be saved, right? In other words, if we are saved, 
then we are missionaries. It's possible to be a missionary without ever leaving your city. And let me tell you, people, some people are called to go cross-cultural. Yes, we saw that earlier, right? And some people are called to be where they're at right now. But every single person, whether you're a believer of Jesus Christ, are called to make an impact in where they're at right now. And they're called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? If you have been saved, then you have been sent to tell others the good news. God the Father sent his son, and just as he, just as he was sent by God, God sends us to continue his mission. If I could get the next slide, please. Charles Spurgeon said, every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. If you read the word of God, then there's no way of getting around it, right? There's no way of getting around it. In the New Testament, it just, the early church just exploded and everybody was going everywhere, spreading the gospel in the business areas, in the marketplace. They were just going everywhere and continuing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Go! Everybody knows the, the Great Commission. I hope everybody knows the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What that means is as you go, make disciples. As you go, make disciples. Evangelism or sharing Christ isn't just a one-time event, but it's a lifestyle for us as believers. It's a command, right? It's not a suggestion. Not a suggestion. God sends because God saves. His mission is to send and save people. And if that weren't the case, then why did he send Jesus? And if it's a command, then it is our duty as believers to fulfill it because it's who we are. That's why seeing those those stories of the, the missionaries earlier and uh, Christina, man, that is just amazing what God is doing, what God is doing. So how does this apply to today? Well, last I checked, before COVID, we lived in a lost and dying world, right? And far after COVID, we're still going to be living in a broken, hurt world, aren't we? The message hasn't changed. Nothing has changed in regards to that. What should we do? Some people may ask. Churches may ask, what should we do? And the question is, is not what should we do, but what are we not doing? Are we not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with people? You can't quarantine the Great Commission. Amen? You can't quarantine a follower of Jesus Christ. Man, and I'm just going to say this, that what God has done in my life, how he totally changed me and transformed me, I cannot withhold that. I cannot not tell somebody about what Jesus did. When I was in the Air Force, when I was in the military, a little personal testimony here, I was a huge alcoholic. My first duty station was Las Vegas, right? People call it Sin City. You know, that was one of the reasons why I joined the military because I wanted to get away from that kind of lifestyle. And then I got placed right back into it in Las Vegas and, you know, Sin City. But, hey, I'm going to tell you right now that every city is Sin City. And then after that, I just wanted to get away from that. So I put in for orders to South Korea and I went to South Korea. And that was even worse because I was away from my wife, Melissa, and they have even worse things to do over there when it comes to drinking and partying. And then my base after that followed was Italy. The military sent me to Italy. I was in the Air Force. And when I arrived to Italy, when I got off the rotator, that's what they call the the military plane, the rotator, because you rotate in and then people rotate out and they go to the next duty station. When I got off the rotator, 
Not one time did this come into my mind when I stepped off. Man, I think I'm going to start going to church, and I think I'm going to become a follower of Jesus Christ. That was not my plan whatsoever. That was not my plan. But God had a different plan for me. Does God have a different plan for you? Is the plan that you're on right now, is that working? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Man, my plan was to get drunk. My plan was, man, I am in wine country. That was my plan. That was my plan. But God had another plan for me. Actually, our neighbor was a Christian, and they ended up inviting us to church. And then to uh, make the story short, Melissa and I got saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and then set on fire for Jesus. God totally changed us. He totally transformed our lives. He totally transformed our lives. He just ripped down all the addictions, the alcoholism. And you know what the funny thing is? Is I didn't have to follow just like a set of rules. I just followed after Jesus and the world just fell off my shoulders. And the world just fell off my shoulders. And man, I ran hard after God. I ran hard after God. Are you running hard after God? Because the one thing with that is when you're running, everybody knows football. If you're running hard, it's hard for somebody to tackle you, right? And it's the same. If you're running hard after Jesus, it's hard for the world to just cling on to you and pull you down, right? Are you running hard after Jesus? Are you on fire for Jesus? If persecution didn't stop the early church, then what's going on right now won't stop the church. If there was plagues in the past, and guess what? The church just went right into them. Pandemic can't stop it either. God is a missionary God. So the church is a missionary church. Amen? Loretta, if I could get your team up here help man God is so good isn't he two reasons why you haven't shared the gospel it's either you haven't been saved because once you're saved man you will know and understand how much God has forgiven us, how much grace he has had upon our lives and how he can use us for his purpose. Or you just might not have any concern for those who are around you and you need to get realigned with the calling God has placed on your life. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, God saves. 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus, his one and only son. Jesus in the human flesh, God in the human flesh to die for us for the punishment that we deserve. He took it upon himself. He was both fully man and fully God. He represented all of mankind in order to bring us back into a relationship with God. And he proved this through signs, miracles, and wonders through his life, his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. And I'm talking to all generations that are here. I'm talking to Gen Z, Millennial, Gen X, whatever, whatever you, they're labeled. I'm talking to all generations. And I'm going to tell you this right now. That there is no greater message out there. There is no other gospel that saves except the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're a a younger individual, if you're a millennial or Gen Z, I'm going to tell you right now 
that there is nothing else that you have to search for. You found it right here today. That there's no, nothing new, no greater message, nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, what happened to me was I was searching for purpose and meaning in my life. And I did that through drugs, through alcohol, through sex, and none of it ever satisfied me because those were all material possessions. Those were all things that were temporary. And so I had this hole in my soul and I would just suck up all the world that was around me and it never satisfied me because it wasn't eternal. It wasn't until I met Jesus Christ and came into a personal relationship with him that I found purpose, that I found meaning in life. And not only that, but I have a destiny, right? To be with God forever. Amen. God sends because God saves. If you could all stand with me. If you are one of those people here today that has not given your life over to Jesus, Pastor Aaron was talking earlier about it, then I want you to come forward right now and receive Christ. And if I could have Pastor Aaron, Pastor Dean, if you could be up here to receive anyone. This is your time. The Apostle Paul said, the time for salvation is now. And I'm telling you that you will never experience anything greater and that you will never have any regrets. The gospel is powerfully infectious and you cannot keep the good news to yourself. If you need to get realigned with the calling that God has placed on your life, then I also want you to come forward and receive prayer. For God to realign your life and the calling that he has placed on you. Amen. So if that is you, here right now, Come forward. We are here to pray for you. 